shot! Whoa! Yeah! Oreo. Yeah, thank you, Daryl. You're welcome. Appreciate that. I ain't never had cookout. Have you not ever had cookout? Is it called, that's what it's called, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cookout. No, no. no. They don't got these out west. Well, it's a good thing Daryl treated you. Something nice, finally. Yep. I treated you, too. Daryl's had cookout a lot. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying anything. Are these real? <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you'd already left. What? Stop signs laying on the ground over here in the corner. That was pretty good. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Well, you guys, summer has turned to fall in Montana, which means that the night times are cold. So what you have to do once a year is hop out, open your hood, and turn your heater valves on, on your engine, so your heater will work again. My good friends over at Olight have sent me another flashlight to try out. This one's bigger and badder than the previous two. As you know, I've just been progressively stepping my way up. This light is called the Seeker 4, and I'm glad that I have it with me. We're going to load cattle to run to Nebraska, and I gotta get these heater valves turned on, so let's uh, let's see how bright this thing is. Well, that's pretty cute. They have what's called moonlight, a little baby light. Of course, I need more than that right now. Boom, baby. Holy smokes. <laughs> Check that out. Yo. fun little feature about the Seeker 4, it's got a little turn dial on it. So if you want moonlight, you got moonlight. If you want raging blaze your face out, you just dial it to the right. See how that works? Rechargeable, of course. I think I'm going to like this thing, you guys. If you want to check it out, get in the description. We'll hook you up with the deal. They got a huge sale going on right now just for a few days, 30% off. Get you something. So if you're wondering, first of all, welcome in. Glad you could join us. Smash that like button. Go ahead and click on that subscribe. 
turn on the bell. Oh my goodness, speaking of bells, I got my bell rung about 100 times last night. So the, the route that we took uh, was just kind of rough. It's a little rough. Oh, look at them guys over there. They got a fan man. They got a fan man. So we came up 77, is that right? Man, I can't even think straight. I should probably figure it out before I tell you. Anyway, 77, 64, 30, 35, 64, 91, 76, all the, all the numbers. Woo! Man, look at them boys. Look at them boys. See you later. Try that again, huh? We are here at Road America, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I feel much better. We stopped, we had a little breakfast, had an omelet, had some hash browns, a little pancake, just what a trucker needs to get some juice back in the goose. Should be a good race, you guys. This is a road course. We had a great run last week, came up short, still looking for our first win. But, uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, things to watch for in this episode is going to be that uh, trucker Chris, old Highway, and I are going to play a much bigger role this week. Here's why: there is no Cup race here. The Cup race is the uh, the next series above us in NASCAR, and normally Cup runs with Xfinity. We're Xfinity, obviously, and uh, we run on Saturdays. Cup run on Sundays. We use the same pit crews. So on Saturday, we would use a cup pit crew, and then on Sunday, the pit crew would do the cup race. Well, there's no cup here, which means there's no pit crews here. So the entirety of the pit stuff is gonna fall on our own crew. So Chris is gonna be the main fuel man. He'll be fueling, and uh, the scuttle on the street is that I may be carrying tires over the wall which means I'll be helmeted up be going over the wall I'm very excited about it it's gonna be fun to actually be a legitimate official part of a NASCAR pit crew here at Road America Sheboygan Wisconsin real car you got three different spots well, actually four different spots uh, that's it oh yeah Oh, no. oh yeah. Ah. Finally found these rental cars. That's always good. It's uh, oftentimes kind of a fiasco trying to find your rental cars. Because every there's a spider. Oh, oh it got inside. Oh. A Wisconsin spider got inside. 
He's gonna have to ride there for a little bit. Anyway, it's sometimes it's kind of a fiasco trying to find your rental cars. All the trucks roll in, and the rental car companies stage all these rental cars for us, uh, which usually are Chrysler uh, Pacificas most of the time uh, with Hertz. But they stage them for you, and it's always different. Every track, of course, is set up different, parking's different, layout's different. And sometimes you're like, oh, there they are. And sometimes, like today, you travel around and talk to every single person at the track. And sometimes it's the very last person that you talk to is like, oh, yeah, I got the keys right here. <laughs> so we got them. We are uh, we're missing one of our trucks, though. One of our trucks left uh, left a little early. He left three or four hours before we all did and uh, hasn't showed up yet. So that's a bit of a mystery that we'll have to unravel at some point. I'll show you another little problem we had last night coming around. So here in the hauler this morning, 4.30 a.m., we see the old door was open. And this fridge door, I don't know why, it's got a decent little tab that when it shuts, it shuts tight, but for some reason when you're rolling down the road and it gets a little force against it, it'll open. Don't ask me how, because when you're sitting here, you can't hardly pull it open. You can't pull it open, but yet somehow going down the road. I don't know if the whole frame of the thing tweaks or what, but anyway, some casualties, cream cheese, cream cheese, and more cream cheese. Chris is gonna be cooking steak and shrimp, so looking forward to that. update from the trackage this is gonna be another classic case of NASCAR doesn't care about his truckers <laughs> you know it's YouTube so we can say stuff like that <laughs> they kind of kind of made a little error in the schedule um, we still got five hours is it, it yeah. is five hours isn't it? at least five yeah. we've been here for five, I don't know, four five three hours. four five yeah. We've been here for many hours and we have many more to sit. So we're gonna go pick up old Hollywood. Start calling him Driftwood. This old fireman always got him wiping down the truck. Yeah, and <laughs> we're gonna go get something to eat. Not daddy. Yo daddy. <laughs> what happened to him? I have no idea. He uh so I guess it broke down. He didn't call nobody, so Breakfast muffin, you know, places there. Daryl. What's up? What's going on, buddy? Much. <laughs> you been sleeping all day? Oh, he never look after he's been sleeping <laughs> all day. On the road. Oh, I haven't slept a wink yet. Not a wink. I'm gonna sleep so good tonight. Yeah, brother, me too. Put your in the I'll get them. I'll put all <laughs> stuff <laughs> two in each year. Yeah. yeah. Double stack them. <laughs> Lumberjack over there. <laughs> His nickname goes from fireman to lumberjack come nighttime because he starts <laughs> sawing them logs. Right. He grows a beard, flannel shirt, everything just starts <laughs> sawing them logs. The brawny man. Brawny. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh. I'm going to eat lunch. I got to fix my hair. What you call fixing trucker hair right here, but not much left to this fix. This is really it, guys. what you call fixing like Hollywood. Look, you're running dry on the hair there, bud. How's that look? It looks yeah. good. Hey, y'all seen him a few tweets? Let him know how it looks. Hey, turn around. Turn around for me. Yeah, but it looks the same as the back that does the front. <laughs> Hollywood, you found a new hobby. A new well, piece. I mean, you know, sometimes I haul this in the truck and uh, it's nice to get out on it and cruise around, ride to the bar and have some lunch and, hey, what do you guys think about it? I mean, nothing but just cool road all over. Whew. Check it out. Uh, tonight and tomorrow night, rooms or, uh, see, you guys have fun. How many adults and children? Um, Three. Three. 
eight uh, eight adults, so it'd be uh, four uh, four doubles. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, it's like this sweet racetrack out in the woods, and then the. <laughs> Yeah, see if we can't Seriously. upgrade a little bit. You know, show Jackson a good time, really, what it's like. You know, stay on the lake, rent a boat and stuff. This is his last trip, you know. We can't be sticking him in a damn Hampton Inn. Come on. He can't handle the pressure, so he's got to do <laughs> no, something. Make him feel more better. in here Christo I'm gonna call him one shot one, one shot one shot bud. just rolled in and got a first try yeah they don't back it up in this class all these other guys back and forth bad we're doing this nope that's called luck of the draw <laughs> oh. Hollywood you gotta tell me about it how, how listen did it happen? listen how did it happen? that's what I'm talking about <laughs> baby one shot Whoa! <laughs> back for a minute let me fill you guys in real quick i know that it appears in this moment that i am living the life of ease comfort wonder and awe <laughs> i'm not i'm sitting in a hampton inn which is a nice hotel but i just did a little hot tub trying to wind down and relax a little bit before i go up and go to bed it's not very late it's like uh, nine o'clock central time uh here um the race is up at road america near sheboygan <laughs> sheboygan and um gotta love those names gotta love them but anyway let me fill you in uh holland for nascar is not always rainbows fairies unicorns butterflies cabbage patch dolls and fun there's times where you're just like what is going on what are we doing uh i know that that from afar a lot of what we do can look like man what a what a dream job dream job let me give an example, okay? So I started driving. I'll try to keep this quick. I started driving yesterday at 5 o'clock from Charlotte. I drove for 10 and a half hours, turned it over to Chris in the wee hours of the morning. It was about 4 a.m.-ish, um, about an hour east, southeast of Chicago. Chris took over, drove on up while I tried to sleep. Did not sleep because the roads are such a disaster in this country. It's unbelievable the mess that they are and i'm reminded every time i try to lay back in that bunk and sleep not happening uh just rattle around back there to death so chris drives up we get the truck wash south of milwaukee at about uh you know 4 35 o'clock i think my timeline's not quite matching up i think chris took over at 3 a.m we washed at about 4 30 anyway it doesn't matter but the point of what i'm trying to say is we got up to the racetrack at you know around eight o'clock ish something like that and we sat at the racetrack, like on site, but outside of the track. So there's the, like the complex and then there's inside the track, right? Cause the track makes a circle. We got to go inside of there to get all our equipment in, which usually means going under a tunnel and getting in. Uh, we sat there from eight o'clock this morning until six o'clock tonight. You guys, that was a lot of hours. It was hot. We sat in the sun, we sat in the shade. We turned the truck on, sit in the AC for a bit rotate grab some lunch just just sat there it was i'll be honest i tried to make the footage you know look somewhat you know hee-haw but it was just a terrible boring long hot day and in in our minds as the haulers for no reason okay they they had it scheduled for us to park at six and we're like we're all there by noon 
You know, even the, the late stragglers came in by noon. And we're like, why, why? Why are we waiting here till six? Well, it turns out, it sounds like the scuttlebutt on the street, word amongst the trucks was, they just went off the schedule that they had last year, which was an entirely different schedule because they had more race cars here last year from some other series racing. And they just used that schedule and, and forgot that, oh, we only have half the amount of race cars from NASCAR here this year. Uh, we, should, we should shuffle. Well, big outfits, big deals, you know, something like NASCAR, the wheels turn so slow. I don't, I don't know why. It's like, why can't someone just make a decision and say, yeah, let's park the trucks at noon. Let's just do it. We're going to amend things a little bit and we're just going to do it so they can all go get, get out of here and go rest. And I mean, everybody's just rung out, strung out. And uh, just not the way it happened. So we sat there till six. We parked from about six till 7.30. And then our hotel's an hour south of the track. So we got down here at whenever, 8.30 tonight. So it's just been a marathon. Haven't slept, you know, in two days. Uh, so I'm gonna, that's why I'm going up and going to bed. I'm not, I'm not going out to eat. I'm not, I'm just going to bed. I want to catch up, see my eyes. Look in my eyes. I'm tired. So anyway, you guys, uh, that's the reality of the situation. Trucking is that way a lot. It's not just a NASCAR thing. It's, that's a lot of trucking. You hurry, hurry, hurry. And then you wait, hurry, wait, hurry, wait. Kind of like that. But anyway, uh, tomorrow's plan. We're going to get out to the track at about 10. We did not unload the cars tonight because it's supposed to downpour rain up there. Who knows? But uh, we're going to go up there about 10 o'clock, get unloaded, get things set up. So when the crew flies in at noon or one or whatever they're doing, uh, everything will be ready for them. And then we'll, uh, we'll practice, qualify, and race Saturday. So that's it for tonight, you guys. See you in the morning.